Coming up on one minute, mark T minus 60 seconds and counting, we are go. T minus 50 seconds. Coming up on the 40-second mark, T-minus 40 seconds and counting, T-minus 40, all reports look good, all aspects of the mission go, T-minus 30 seconds and counting. Now T-minus 21 seconds and counting. Ready to go. Coming up on the 10 second mark. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. We have ignition. Commit liftoff. We have liftoff. Welcome to Kitter 11 Online. And it's great to be back with you here at the High Street Studios. Now, just a reminder, not only do you get to watch Kids at 11 online this week, we are also meeting in person for Sundays at 11 outside at St. Faith Church in Leon the Solent. If you're able, please do come along. It will be great to meet you in person. Hello, George. Uh, what's that in your hand? It's a picture I've drawn. It looks like a blank piece of paper to me. Um, is it a picture of a white cat in a snowstorm? No, it's from Jesse's Challenge last week. Yes, I remember that. Draw a picture of something you have never seen. So what is this a picture of? Here. Here? Yes, here. I can't see here, so this is not a picture of it. Well, George, that is fairly brilliant. Well done. Now, let's find out what's on Kitty 11 online this week. I do hope there's some of your favourites there. Do write to us and let us know what your favourites are. And please do send in more of your jokes. Send them to this address here. Um, but now it's time for our first song and this song is fast, snappy and to the point. Do you believe it? Whoever 
invented knock knock jokes deserves a Nobel Prize. Ha ha ha! <laughs> Two weeks ago we heard about how Jesus was crucified and was resurrected. After Jesus had died on the cross, Joseph of Arimathea took his body and laid it to rest in a tomb, sealed with a big heavy stone door. However, on the day we call Easter Day, the tomb where Jesus' body was laid to rest was found to be empty. Later on that day, Mary Magdalene met Jesus near the tomb and spoke to him. Jesus was alive, risen from the dead. And then last week we heard about later that day in the evening and the disciples were all together and Jesus came in and stood amongst them. Peace be with you, he said, and he shown them the wounds in his hands and in his side. And they realised that Jesus really was alive, risen from the dead. However, if you remember, one of the disciples was not present at the time. That's right, it was Thomas. Uh, he was the disciple that wasn't there. And we heard how it was a week later before Thomas met Jesus. Today I'm going to tell you about what happened between the time of Mary meeting the risen Jesus for the first time and the disciples meeting Jesus that evening. And for this part of the story, we actually have to turn to the gospel written by Luke. Now, let me set the scene. Jesus has died on the cross and his body has been laid in a tomb. The disciples are in disarray and cannot believe that Jesus is dead. Two of the disciples decide to get quickly away from Jerusalem, travelling out on the road to Emmaus. So let's find out what happened. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I will begin. On the third day after Jesus was crucified and put into the tomb, Two of his disciples were walking along a road out of Jerusalem. One of them was Cleopas. They were on their way to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles out of the city. They were talking about the events that led to Jesus being put on a cross to die. As they talked, a man came up and walked alongside them. It was Jesus, but they were kept from recognising him. The stranger asked, what are you talking about? They stopped and stood still, looking sad. Cleopas said, are you the only person in Jerusalem who does not know what has happened? What things? asked the stranger. Jesus of Nazareth was handed over by the chief priests to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. The disciples explained, we hoped he would save us. But then this morning, when some of our women went to the tomb, it was empty. His body was missing. Some of our friends went to the tomb to see what had happened and it was definitely empty. How foolish you are not to believe what the prophet said would happen many years ago. They told us the saviour Messiah would have to suffer before rising to glory. Then the stranger explained how first Moses and then the other prophets had written down that the saviour of the world would die and rise from the dead. As they approached Emmaus, the stranger looked as if he was travelling on further. They invited him to stay with them and he agreed. As they ate together, the stranger took the bread broke it and gave it to them. Immediately God allowed the two disciples to see who the stranger was. Jesus! At that moment Jesus disappeared from their sight. Weren't our hearts warmed as he spoke to us and explained what is written about the Saviour? They explained. They got up and rushed back to Jerusalem at once. They found the other disciples and excitedly told them what had happened. The room they were in was locked. Suddenly, Jesus appeared and stood amongst them. 
Peace be with you, he said. Everyone was frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you afraid and in doubt, asked Jesus. Look at my hands and feet. It's me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as I have. The disciples were full of joy and amazement, but could still not really believe Jesus was alive. Do you have something I can eat? Jesus asked. They gave him some broiled fish and Jesus ate it as they watched. Jesus opened their minds so they could understand from the scriptures that it had been written he would suffer and die and then rise from the dead. He told them they would tell others this good news and urge people to turn to God and be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Then Jesus disappeared from their sight once more. And that ends our reading for today. Having escaped from Jerusalem after Jesus has been killed and buried, those two disciples in the story return to Jerusalem after a walk to Emmaus and back. And that wasn't just any walk, was it? They had had a conversation with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. But they didn't know it was Jesus at that point, did they? But talking about what had happened brought them some comfort to try and understand what was going on. They were shocked at Jesus' death. They grieved for the loss of their friend. They were confused about the disappearance of their body. And it helped to talk about these feelings and emotions while walking. However, as Jesus eats with them, these feelings give way to an expression of pure joy. And when Jesus explains the scriptures to them, understanding of the truth about who he is, I often think that the disciples that followed Jesus must have been amazing people. They gave up their work to follow Jesus. But if you don't work, you don't have any money to buy food or accommodation or clothes or anything else. But they still followed Jesus. So knowing from this story that even the disciples experienced times of anxiety in their journey of faith, can actually be quite encouraging to me and encouraging to all of us. And the example of the, exa of the disciples helps me to find ways of getting through times of trouble. In this case, if I am troubled, you know what? It often helps me to talk to someone I trust about my, my feelings or my concerns. And this might help you too. If you are troubled or have concerns, why not explain them to someone you trust? And if you are the friend who is listening, it is very important that you listen and not say anything and not judge. Don't give them what you think is the correct answer because they've got to find that on their own journey, their own road to Emmaus and back. After you've listened, and let them explain their issues, let me share with you a really powerful thing that you can do that actually helps. Ask if you can pray for them and their situation. This allows you to give the fears and concerns of your friend to God to help out and to show your friend that you were listening to them. Make your prayers simple and just lift the burden up to God. Should we try it now? Put your hands together. Father God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, would you please help anyone who is praying to you now? Listen to their concerns and show them what to do next. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near, I can lie down and sleep.
Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near, I can lie down and sleep. You are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in What is it? What's 
Fact Time with my special guest, Pete the Aussie. Hello, Pete. Good day, Kev. Now, this is Fact Time, and Pete, what is the fact you've got for us today? Well, Kev, today is the 18th of April, and 140 years ago today, on the 18th of April, 1881, the Natural History Museum in South Kensington, London, was opened for the first time to the public. Now, the Natural History Museum provided a permanent home for the ever-growing collection of natural history specimens and is one of the most iconic buildings in London. When you enter the Natural History Museum front doors, you get to see the skeleton of a 25.2 metre long blue whale hanging from the ceiling. The purpose of this exhibit is to remind us that we all have responsibility to protect the biodiversity of our planet. There is so much to see and do at the Natural History Museum in London that it is a great place to go to for a day visit. However, don't rush off tomorrow because due to the pandemic lockdown, the Natural History Museum is currently closed to visitors. The plan to carefully ease lockdown conditions is progressing and the Natural History Museum is expecting to be open again on Monday the 17th of May 2021. 140 years and 29 days after it first opened. Well Pete, thank you for that interesting fact today and may I just add that next door to the Natural History Museum is the Science Museum, which is another great place to visit. That is true, Kev. And just over the road is the Victoria and Albert Museum, another great place to visit. challenge this week my challenge is and are you ready for this wiggle your ears your cat can do it and so can a hippopotamus but can you wiggle your ears go on give it a go and see if you can wiggle your ears let me know how you get on here at jasmine's challenge thank you and goodbye, 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 goodbye. I'm removing items that we can't be collected in our curbside recycling bins, such as chapter packs, such as large crisp bags, small crisp bags, plastic bread loaf bags, cheese packaging, paper cups, plastic toothbrushes, the plastic that toothbrushes comes packed in. Empty toothpaste tubes. Now the good news is I can actually recycle all of these items. As long as they're clean and empty, you can recycle them in the recycling bins at St. Pace Church in Leon the Solent. So if you have any of these items that I've just shown you, then I invite you to bring them down to St. Pace Church in Leon the Solent and place them in our recycling bins. And together, let's make a difference in Lee. If you want any more information, then please visit this website below.
Well, marble roll is coming up, and last week we learnt about the marble odds and evens game. Uh, did you manage to give it a go? Anyway, here's marble roll. Welcome to Marble Roll and today I'm going to tell you about another traditional marble guessing game and this one's called the eggs in the bush game. Yes you heard me correctly, the eggs in the bush game. The game is very easy to learn and can be played with two or more people. Um, divide up all your marbles equally between all the players um, and the first player picks up some marbles in their hand and says how many marbles do I have in my hand? And the other players have to guess how many marbles there are in the hand. If they guess correctly, then they then win that number of marbles. But if their guess is not correct, they pay the difference between the number guessed and the number actually held. So, George. Yeah? Um, how many marbles do I have in my hand? Uh, 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 six. Shall we have a look? Five. So you guessed six, George. Yeah, I did. And there is actually five. So that's a difference of one. So you owe me one marble. Oh, okay. Players take turns to ask the question, how many marbles do I have in my hand? And the game ends when either someone runs out of marbles or after a certain amount of time. The person with the highest number of marbles at the end of the game wins. Uh, if you have four hands, uh, you might not have your whole many marbles in your own hand. So as an alternative, you could cover up some marbles using a cup and say, how many marbles do I have in my cup? You could do that. Kevin! Yes. How many marbles do I have in my cup? Um, uh, this cup here? Yeah, that cup. Um, I think you've got... Five. Shall we have a look? One, two, three, four, five. Yes! So that means you pay me five marbles. Oh, crikey! Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much, George. Um, this is a really great game to play. George, how many marbles do I have in my hand? Uh, do you have... Uh, uh, four? Uh, should we have a look? Four! Oh, well done, George! So you win four marbles. You know those ones. Uh, Kevin, how many marbles do I have... Under I cup. That cup there? Yes. Um, four. Shall we have a look? Oh no, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six minus four is two. So George, I owe you two marbles. This is a really great game to play. Uh, so why not try playing it at home? The Marble Eggs in the Bush game. A simple game to play almost anywhere. So for the disciples that evening when Jesus appeared among them, it was a happy day. It was, oh, a happy day, the greatest day in history.
time for here on Kids at 11 online this week. Um, thank you for joining us and if you ever feel troubled then why not copy the disciples and talk to someone you trust and tell them about your troubles. And let me remind you about a really powerful thing you can do that actually helps. You can pray to help for any situation. Meanwhile find time to see if you can wiggle your ears. Uh, try playing the marble eggs in a bush game. It really is simple uh, game and you can play almost anywhere. Um, keep tending and watering your apple seeds and please do send your pictures, paintings, jokes and prayers to us here at this address below. I will be at Sundays at 11 outside at St. Mary's Church in Leon the Solent so if you join us please do come and say hello. And we'll be back with Kids at 11 online next week, won't we? So it's goodbye from me. Say goodbye, George. Goodbye, George. Goodbye. some piano music. Pete the Aussie here. 91 years ago on the 18th of April 1930 at 8.45pm in the evening that is what the BBC News Bulletin looked like. The news announcer had nothing to communicate, so he said, there is no news. And then piano music was played for the rest of the 15 minute segment. Now, that's a fact you probably didn't know, in which case it was news to you.